Yo! Welcome to episode 23 of Seraphic Blue. We finally arrived at uh, Rough Ford, so uh, let's actually see what it, where, where exactly we need to do. Here. Seek refuge with Minerva and Hassan within the OHG. Alright. Um, I'm actually gonna check uh, my inventory real quick. I know I probably should have done this before recording just in case I need to stock up on items and not waste time doing so. Um, I think that's good, honestly. I'm thinking if I should, like, change everyone's equipment just in case there might be, like, a boss fight or something upcoming ahead. You know what? I'm okay with this loadout. Yeah. I think it's nice. Uh, what do you guys say? OHG headquarters lies up ahead. In the past, there were large gatherings of volunteers in the headquarters almost every day. But ever since the OHG's relations uh, with the CMGC turned for the worse two years ago, the gatherings have become far and few and far between. Alright, so let's go ahead to the OHG headquarters. Welcome to the OHG. How may I help you today? I believe Edwin has received word that two members of the... Wait, whoa. Excuse me, let me re re rephrase that. I believe Edwin has uh, received word that two members of a roller yo family would be coming here. I presume that uh, the both of you are Queen Minerva and Mr. Hassan, the savior of Frezite, right? If you do not mind, please pass me the letter with Madam Daisy's signature for verification. Will this do? Yes. Please allow me some time to scan the code from the electronic chip in the letter. Thank you for waiting. The code checks out. The letter with Madam Daisy's signature has been affirmed to be authentic. Well, welcome, Queen Minerva. We welcome you to the OHG from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. By the way, who are the two persons behind you? I do not remember them having an appointment here. Oh, it's a long story. They have been our companions for some time now. I see. In that case, I will treat all future companions of yours the same way as Mr. Hawson. Please do. Oh, and well... There is actually something I have to tell you. What is it? The man behind me. The one with the blue hair. Yes, what about him? He goes by the la uh, name Lake Londori. Queen, you must be joking. This is serious. As I thought. Look, their expressions have somehow turned unpleasant. Yeah, they have looked taken aback and troubled. It's because of you, I guess. <laughs> I guess. So, I suppose they are not around. Yes, to tell you the truth. Well, if that isn't irony. It is true in case. How long will it... Oh my god, auto, auto text. They are already on their way back. They should arrive within a few days. Apologies for that. But until then, you will have to make your stay here and wait for them to return. I believe it must have been a long and tiring journey for all of you, so do feel free to stretch out your wings and rest to the fullest. Rest assured, it is safe here. Thank you. We'll do as you advise. So, what should we do now? Well, we are supposed to meet with the important members of the OHG first, but at the moment, it seems they are away and will only be back after a few days. Therefore, we will stay here until they return. Great, is this another uh, Juves moment where we're going to get a huge long uh, cutscene? Nice. Since we have nothing particular to do, let's take a well-deserved rest for the for the time being. Huh. 
I am surprised that they have already made their move to find him. I would like to add that an unforeseen development has take indeed taken place here. After many twists and turns, Lake has, in the end, come here on his own account. Such is an ironic, uh... Well, I missed that word because fucking auto-text. By the way, Hassan, there are several things about the incident at Revelstoke that has been bothering me. You must be referring to those Lucifers and George, yes? Those Lucifers. There uh, was something strange about them. Indeed, there was. Lucifers are sacred, sentient, uh, are sacredly sentient and are never seen under people's control. Never mind serving obediently as someone's underlings. Could that criminal have made modifications to them? I am afraid it is a possibility. Our advisory is likely to be one of the, the executives of the Internal Affairs Office, but it, but it won't be so simple as to carry out an internal investigation on how those Lucifers were manipulated. If this issue is uh, carelessly leaked out, the DLG Law Bar Barament, uh, Support Group will certainly raise a fuss about it. Public opinions tend to be loud nowadays. It will be fatal to the government if the public were to intercept this issue as a scandal. And that would, in turn, greatly favor Abram uh, and the six-year com, uh, comment, wow, commentar. Ah, I can't even talk, speak. Shoot, I should have got water before I started this episode. It is too risky for an investigation to be conducted now. We'll have to simply be, simply keep an eye out on this for the time being. At the very least, I will have to first discuss it directly with Daisy. The next issue has to do with George. You heard his name earlier, didn't you? Yes, I did. Without a doubt, Lake blurted out George's name back at Brevin's stroke. And from Lake's tone, I could tell that both of them are already not on good terms with each other. I have a feeling George's motive is to get rid of Lake. After all, they are bound by blood. Concerning the incident involving Syra Rosberg 23 years ago, you are indeed right about that. Huh. To make up for failing to kill his archenemy back then, George now has now planned to kill Lake. He is terribly uh, relentless and without a doubt immune to reason. Yes, I agree with your assessment of him. But what's truly frightening about him is not his actions, but the true motives that drives him. By that, I refer to how George is actively engaged in the world's affairs at present. Investigations uh, reports on that incident mostly detail George's uh, relationship with Syrah, and the conclusion of those reports is that George is a complete deviant. He has mental problems. That said, it is unclear whether or not he was in the wrong. For the time being, it can only be confirmed that she was a victim. A person like him should not have been gifted with power. It was a mistake to include him in the project. There has been talks of moving him from power ever since the reign of our former queen, Madame uh, Anita. However, the executives trust him too much and turn a deaf's ear to altogether to those talks. In any case, I feel we are slowly being pinned down by his power. Do you? Well, in theory, it is true that we are superior to George. However, I sense something in him. It is the existence of fangs that ideally and substantially negate our superior superiority. Uh, and part of that is uh, pausingly similar to findings from our investigations on George. George's self-interest is, is truly an abnormality. It is what fuels his mad desire to slaughter the whole world. That man is a primary threat. We have to pull out his fangs as quickly as possible. 
Madam, I need to uh, mention that as well. Can you feel it? There are signs that fate is st straying away from its course. It is likely that those signs have already surfaced behind the scenes. Yes. I have an ominous feeling about what is to come. Insanity will grip the land. It is just as Dolan and his team has predicted. It will be more intense than we have ever imagined, and more gruesome. Dolan, that old guy, uh, that, uh, what was that old lady name? Now, I can't, I got their names, uh, forgotten, switched up now. What is that old lady name again? Fuck. I do remember that conversation. Whatever. Well, now what? I've gone to great pains to just to come all the way back uh, here from chaos. It would be stupid to go back so soon now. I'll need to find a good reason to stay. I don't know. I'm just horrible with fucking names. I can't fucking remember them. Uh, I can't just ask casually like I did back then. In a form place like this, I'll have to make a formal request of it. I guess I'll give it a try. That'll probably uh, uh, allow me to have more chances to work wi out with my body. After all, this is a good opportunity to stretch my legs and walk about. I'm doing this uh, for you just once, Officer Stingry. Stingy. Officer Stingy. Is that the old man from her uh, backstory? Vene, what should I do now? Even though I had expressed my desires to those two, that I wanted to meet you again. That's unlikely to be fulfilled after given how messed up everything has turned out to be. Sheesh. What's their deal with throwing me into this parallel world? They could have just sent me back normally. Those two in black. Screw them. Hmm? Wait a minute. Didn't Minerva say uh, she and Hassan knew about my background? In that case, it's obvious they would have known, or they would have known about the people of my world as well. This would be a good time to approach them about this. I'll ask them what Frezite is exactly, and also how to get back to the real world. All right. I guess we're alone for this section. I wonder, is there like... Okay. Nothing. I thought there was something to interact with. Um, door locked. Door locked. Door locked. I'm gonna assume the other twos <laughs> are door locks. What's over here, though? Yeah, I see Owen, uh, the current chairman of the CMGC before. He's an incredibly terrifying old bird. From what I heard, he used to be a general. I guess it must be a living hell for those who work under him. This is the courtyard, the place where we relax our tired minds and bodies after a battle against Gaia cancers. But as you can see, the fountain here is out of order. Furthermore, there are no plans to fix it due to a strict bu budget. That's kind of a waste if you think about it. The... The road? Nah, nope. Oh, mm, I can't even. Uh... Ron... Ke was... Uh, originally a second-hand transport airship. At any rate, it wasn't designed to look like anything special. Even so, our leader went about haggling over the airship's price and bought it with what little budget he had. I guess he isn't one to show off. The airship that left for that one Gaia cancer. Huh. There's nothing over here. This is a huge place to explore. The airship dock lies beyond here. I'm sorry, but you won't be able to see uh, 
Ronan. All right, I want to try pronouncing this correctly, so I'm going to assume this is supposed to be, like, all in Japanese, like, a Japanese pronunciation, so. Ro-an? Okay. Ro-nan? Oh. Okay. Ro-an? Okay. ro <laughs> God damn it, it's so hard. I don't know why, but it's just frustrating. It's currently away. Also, if you heard that Discord message, sorry, that's on my end. Ha! Alright, that just leads back here. You know what? It would be a real dick move. Foxy, it w I knew it. I should. Pr I probably shouldn't just barge it in. Oh, there is Hassan. This is a room of Her Majesty the Queen. The, youth the youthful Miss Minerva. Alright, cool. Why are you explaining this as if we're strangers? What do you what do you want? I have something I have some things to ask here. You can ask me instead. What? Uh chat in the hallway? Are you displeased with that? Yeah, you bet I am. Then leave. Damn. Alright, let me rephrase. I have some things to ask uh both Minerva and you. How's that? Austin, what's with the commotion? Blake has something to ask you. And you're barring him from entering? <laughs> yes. My goodness. By doing that and showing favoritism towards me as a result, aren't you only creating fiction between us and our companions? Since I am now outside the castle and dressed in ordinary clothes, I should not be treated any differently from the girl next door. Like, don't worry about it. Just come in. Too bad. Queen's orders. <laughs> you are hereby invited to the bridge. <laughs> God damn it, fucking Austin. Into the private room of Her Majesty the Queen. Never forget this great honor that is bestowed upon you. Hilarious. Sigh. Why the hell am I the only one not allowed it in without a fuss? Huh, interesting. Foxy's here. It's obvious. Do you think I would tolerate letting a young man enter the room if it late? <laughs> Damn, Hassan. Oh, don't worry. That guy won't do a thing to her. After all, he wouldn't even dare to uh, do a fucking auto text, my guy. Ah, uh, really wish auto text wasn't a thing. Like, there's no reason, unless like it's timed to the music, but it's not. So, that's j just annoying. Relax, I'm just joking. Uh, I don't mean anything by it. You sure about that? You had better not say it out loud and make me hang my head in shame as a result. Or I'll make sure you to take you down with me. No worries, I have a good reputation for keeping tight-lipped uh, about secrets, after all. So, like, what do you wish to ask? Oh, yeah. About that. You said before that you and Hassan know a lot about me, right? Yes, I did. You also said that the truth about me would be best told by the appropriate persons under an appropriate circumstances. That's right. Then would either one of you be able to enlighten me on anything other than what you're expressly not telling me? Yes, I would. Are you sure about this, Miss Minerva? Well, it is only a matter of time before Lake has to come to grips with everything. In that case, wouldn't it be better to enlighten him little by little than to throw all the information at him in one sitting? As he will eventually be hearing the truth about himself from them. It will be good uh, that he takes this time to learn the fundamentals first. I understand. Then we shall proceed. Eh, I don't really get what you all are saying, but... Are you possibly intending to teach like things that are common sense to us, my lady? No, that's not it. He is not someone who is ignorant to begin with, but a person who naturally doesn't know anything about this world. After all, he is a human. Wait, what? You mean, he resides in the world of the ground? 
Yes. He was, in fact, born and raised there. My gosh. So you're really not from this world. Yeah, that's right. For some time uh, until now, I've been living in this other world of Frezite. You explain that to me, won't you, Miss Minerva? Yes, I'll tell you about that and about the... Oh, fucking autotext. First of all, you are different from us. While you belong to the race of humans, we belong to a race of Sarah humans. Do you know Gaia theory? More or less. Then this will be quick. Spirits flow around this planet of Gaia. A kernel soul, which is the core of life, is formed when a spirit is linked to a body. And when a living entity dies, its spirit will make its way to the soul or to the soul's uh, home via the soul stream. The spirit will then undergo soul in initialization before returning to the ground via the soul stream and becoming a kernel soul again. This form of uh, prov prov ah. providence uh, is commonly referred to as the cycle of transmigration. Now, with respect of the spirits of people in particular, what happens if an interruption occurs in the cycle? An interruption? Yes, think of it. Think about what would happen if the spirit were to leak to a body again while en route to the soul's home. The spirit would get to experience life twice. Correct. Under the original cycle of transmigration, a spirit that has experienced life once will undergo soul initialization and begin a new life. However, that with that interruption in the cycle, a spirit that has experienced life once will not begin a new life. Instead, it will experience life once more before undergoing soul initialization. This brings about another form of uh, Pro providence uh, known as two life cycle uh, under the cycle the kernel soul that lives life the first time is called the first kernel soul while the kernel soul that lives life the second time is called the second kernel soul and so the person whose body is linked to the first kernel soul is the first life form also known as a human a person whose body is linked to the second kernel soul is the second life form, also known as a Sarah human. This law of Gaia is what differentiates uh, you from us. So I'm a human, while you and Foxy are Sarah humans. The world I originate from is the world of humans. The world where I am now is the world of Sarah humans. I can't make head or tails of that. You Sarah humans all look the same as me. Are there any visible differences? Well, I wouldn't say we have visible differences. There aren't any, really. Rather, our differences lies within us. Due to the effects of the soul initialization on their spirits, humans are born with zero knowledge of their past lives. However, Sarah humans begin their lives full of soul knowledge from their previous lives as humans. So I'm gonna assume Vene is one of those Sarah humans. In other words, that alone amounts to Sarah humans having a greater potential than humans. Naturally, most Sarah humans are ordinary in that their past lives knowledge is deeply buried away and is not much of use in their current lives. However, there are a number of Sarah humans classified as geniuses who put that knowledge to practical use. Together with their intelligence, they exhibit f uh, faculties that are beyond what humans can manage. That is why Fezite technology is Fezite's uh, technological strength is far more advanced than that of your world. All right, that's pretty interesting. So you and Foxy are ordinary Sarah humans. Not really all that different from me. Hey, how dare you call Miss Minerva ordinary? It's okay, Hassan. He said nothing. Uh, all right, auto text. But regardless, whether Sarah humans are ordinary people or prodigies, the clear difference between humans and Sarah humans lies with inside their bodies. 
The chances of actually seeing that with one's own eyes, though, are rare. All Sari humans possess memories of their time spent when they were humans. In addition, Sari humans gain new memories as they process through their current lives. However, strictly speaking, the brain of a Sari human will not have enough capacity to store those new memories. That is why a Sari human has an extra pair of body organs that a human does not have, known as the feathers. These organs are specialized uh, solely in storing memories in form of a mo molecular or molecular arrangements basically work like an extra brain. Indecent, uh, uh, the feathers are usually restrained, at, restrained within a Sarah of human's body. However, when a Sarah human is at the peak of concentration, or when he or she loses consciousness, all right, so these are like the wings. Uh, that restraint is removed, and the feathers, in turn, materialize out of the Sarah human's body. Hmm? Haven't I heard this before? By the way, about those angel wings. Ah, yes, they're a mystery. Her wings disappear just as her condition stabilized. Perhaps these wings are a unique body organ that take physical form from molecules at the peak of con concentration or upon loss of consciousness. On the contrary, these wings don't normally appear outside the body and are restrained within. An angel's wings are normally broken down at a molecule level and restrained uh, within the body. That restraint is removed at the peak of concentration uh, or upon loss of consciousness. And when neither of those happens, a wing-shaped body organ takes shape outside the body. You know what? Thinking about those angel children at the orphanage, that's probably where they were abandoned to, right? And I mean, they abandoned... Huh. Like, are they... Huh, I wonder how that works. Like, do they get sent off to, um... Ah, oh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the world now. <laughs> like, to Lake's world, and then... Uh, the orphanage takes them in, or what? Indecently, the molecule arrangements of the angel wings in their normal state is particular to angels. In other words, there is a possibility that the wings contain unique inf knowledge of some kind. Considering that the ad atom <sighs> I can't fucking read, dude. Atomies of the angels are virtually the same as those of humans, save for the wings. It's possible that the wings act as an extra organ for storing knowledge which the bodies of normal humans would otherwise not be able to store. In that case, the question is, what is the purpose of that extra knowledge stored in the wings? Only when that is answered can we get to know the true nature of angels. And because of the structure that materializes is the perfect replica of a pair of wings, we call it the feathers. Hold on, I'm going to be right back. I need a drink. Hell, I'm just gonna get fucking soda, since it's the closest thing to me. I'll be right back. Alright. Putting on my earbuds. And I'm ready to go. Yeah, I have to go downstairs to get fucking water. Since my room's upstairs. But I got a little small mini fridge. Fortunately, it's out of water bottles, so. Soda will just do for now. Alright. Uh, where were we? We call it the feathers. In other words, we Sarah humans are humans with wings. Angels. Yes, we are angels. That is what people of your world uh, call us. The Sarah and Sarah humans, by the way, is short for Sarathim, which refers to the one, uh, the highest ranks of angels. 
and the official name of this world is Frezite, the n- nation of Seraph Seraphim. Uh, I can't pronounce that word, dude. At least I don't think I can pronounce that fucking word, Seraphim. Uh, you look surprised and disillusioned. I think my fucking Discord went off again, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, we may have, uh, we may be regarded as angels, but really we are just another species of humans rather than celestial beings. That's interesting. I'm not disillusioned. I only look that way because there's someone I've been searching for. Someone I know whose true identity is that of an angel. I see. I get it now. That's pretty cool. Excuse me. Vena, is this Sarah human? What? Did you just say? How did you know Vene? And how did you figure out she is a Sarah human? I once saw her wings sprout from her back. What? I was in serious trouble. Ende had summoned a Gaia cancer, but then... Vene released a tremendous force, annihilated <laughs> the Gaia cancer, and even seriously wounded Ende. I owe her one just cause of that. And what then? What happened? She lost consciousness, temporarily. And she had lost her memories by the time she woke up. I see. What's with you? Uh, or what's up with you losing your temper and then calming down? It is a grave matter for a Seri human to have his or her feathers materialize while conscious. Serif- Serific uh, trance. It is a self-destructive move where a Sarah human forces his or her feathers to materialize by reaching a state of extreme emotional intensity. This causes an enormous outpouring of energy in the process. However, as that energy is too much for the body to handle, it can kill the Sarah human instantly. <laughs> Gasp. Then Vene, she had initialized a uh, seraphic trance in order to save you. Is it just a coincidence, uh, coincidence that Vena didn't end up losing her life? I don't know for sure. It could be that she was really only lucky to have survived that, or that she was able to maintain a certain level of control over the energy. Possibly a sort of uh, deter- uh, detergence uh, that does not allow her to die in effect. Deter- yes, a block of some kind. Basically, there's something ensuring that dying is not an option for her. It's the same for you. Huh? Say. Oh, right. Oh, I fucking speed read. Ah, fuck. Uh, I wish I could go back and reread the last few words. Or lines of text. Say, you seem to know Vene well, don't you? I do, but I'm afraid it's something I cannot go into detail about. So then, what do you wish to ask next? Well, I know that Frezite is a parallel world where Sarah humans live. But considering what you just said, it means my world and Frezite share the same concept of Gaia theory. How's that so? The answer is because both worlds are a part of the same Gaia. Frezite is not any parallel world, but a real world unknown to humans. You're kidding. I guess I have no choice but to level with you about this. Frezite is located in the sky. The sky? Yes, your sky. Like I said, Frezite isn't a parallel world. It is the celestial continent of Frezite, the continent that floats in the heavens above the ground where you live. Okay. Ah, I'm thinking about something. About Juves and how the continent c- 
kind of synced in. Did auto text play? Fuck! I would. I, I. I had my eyes down at my keyboard. Shit. <laughs> but I'm thinking, like, could there be like another? I wouldn't say world because they just said it's not like a separate world. But I don't know. Whatever. I'm thinking too much. I can't accept this. Out of all the occasional times I've looked at the sky, I've never seen a continent up there. Not. Uh, well, I'm feel I'm putting in random words that don't belong in there. I've never seen a continent up up there even once. There is a complete difference between things uh, which one can't see and things which don't exist. In Fresnite's case, it w it is a world which cannot be seen from the ground. The worlds of the humans and Sarah humans are different. I know how to say that word, dude. <laughs> I know. Differentiated. Mm. You know what? I give up. And separate from each other by this supernatural effect. That effect is the celestial border, which is a part of Gaia's providence. Man, I keep mispronouncing that. I'm s mm. I don't know how to pronounce it, dude. Fuck. As a compressed layer beneath the celestial continent of Frezite, the celestial border denies passage between the two worlds. Likewise, in terms of visibility, Frezite cannot be seen from the ground and vice versa. Do you also notice the sea around uh, Frezite? Yeah, the color of the sea is kind of unusual. That is the border sea, the outer layer of the fairly thick uh, celestial border. That layer is what blocks the line of sight between the ground and Frezite. And once, ag and once again, I have no idea how the hell something he just explained works. I thought so. It is hard to explain through words alone. Just so you are aware, there are portrayals of a global view of Gaia in the form of CG artworks and publications, and even in the form of real-time 3D images in Frezite's grand museums. I'm sure when you finally lay eyes on one of them, seeing will be believing. For now though, will you at least accept my explanation? Alright, I'll take it uh, as it is. But that only raises another question. Since the Celestial's border is in the way, how did Vene get to the ground then? Well, about that. In order for us Sarah humans to interact with the ground, holes known as celestial tunnels have been created within the celestial border. And the transporter, transporters known as celestial tunnel portals are stationed above these holes. These portals allow the two-way vertical travels between the ground and Frezite. So there's a celestial tunnel por portal directly above Torku Forest? Yes, not only that, but there are also many others located all around Frezite, such as the ones above Darmstead uh, and the Three Streaka Peak. I see, so that's how Venice suddenly appeared in Torku Forest. It's basically the same as flying down from the sky. Anyway, is there a celestial tunnel above L Laurentia? Yes, but why do you ask? Well, I had fallen down the soul stream and ended up appearing on this side upon regaining consciousness. Isn't it only sensible, though, I, that I should come out through the celestial tunnel onto this continent via the soul stream's ascending flow? Well, I suppose there's no dis disputing that is the only way to go. Huh? You, just, you said that in... Okay. You said that in kind of a suggestive uh, manner. What's up with that? When I contacted uh, Daisy earlier, she told me that your appearance had caused an uproar. However, the place where you first appeared in Frizzite was actually way off from the celestial tunnel above Laurentia. Way off? You mean I didn't come out of a celestial tunnel? I would venture that you had passed uh, cleanly through the celestial border. 
I passed through it. Yes, just as I said. It means you didn't come out of the celestial tunnel, but rather skipped it entirely. That's just stupid. You just said no one can pass through the celestial border. Yes, I did. Getting to Fresite by passing through the celestial border, or even the, via the soul stream, is impossible under normal circumstances. Ah, never mind. You're not gonna tell me anything about that, are you? No, I'm not. Is there anything else you would prefer to ask about? Not for the time being. Pretty much all of my majority, que all of my major questions have been answered. Oh, but there's just one thing I'm curious about. How long has Frezite existed? Is it since ancient times? The current year in the grounds, uh, Ro Ronia calendar is uh, 2822, and Frezite's Rio calendar it's the year 60. So what? You're telling me that Frezite only uh, came about only 60 years ago? Perhaps so. History records show that a group named the Rio F uh, founders founded Frezite. Also, the one of the group members, Catherine Frezite, became the first queen of Frezite. However, those details, uh, detailed it records, uh, have all been dis disappeared. Rio Frezite. Uh, think about it. I heard those words uh, before somewhere. Yeah, Juve's uh, museum. I think I might want to re look at that uh, episode myself, or at least the timeline events off screen, of course. Uh, those have already been looked into. They are the famous words in the wor in the world of the ground. Benedict uh, Frezite, Catherine Rio, and the Rio Explorers. That's right. I remember hearing about them back in the Juves Marine History Museum. But that's as much as we know about them. At the moment, we are still investigating the exact details on those names are believed to be linked to one another. So the truth is still in the dark, huh? Yes, darkness hides the facts considering the founding of Frizzite. They have not- you know what? Uh, are those two people like... I'm thinking like, I, I, I can't remember those two people existed at the same time. Because if not, could it be like, uh, one of them been a Sarah human? Whatever. I'm thinking too much. I just need to fucking replay that uh, episode and look over the timeline events. I'm not gonna make any theories. I'm just, whatever. Yes, darkness hides the facts considering the founding of Frezite. They have not been exposed to the full light of the day. Okay, Soto was a mistake. Am I like everything's dry? Ah, my throat is so fucking dry. Yeah, I'm done for the day. Okay, if there are any more doubts you wish to clarify, please feel free to come by and ask me. All right. And we'll just see how you try to stop me next time. Wait. What? Like, prepare yourself mentally for what is to come. Yeah, I will. It's a once in a lifetime special event, isn't it? Once you know everything, a treacherous ro uh, road lies ahead. Whatever you see there, and whatever you think, there will be no turning back to the days before when that time comes. Not like it matters anyway. Bygone days are not worth cherishing. How is it? Have the sprouts auto attacks? God damn it! Oh yes, both the men are doing well. George, in particular, uh, is growing at a great rate. Everything is favorable then. Well, I wonder about that. It's impossible uh, for there to be perfect harmony in this turning point. You know that, right? Which is why it's my wife's job to ease things along. I'm different from her in that. Though my mind is strong, I'm unable to pay attention to my surroundings when I'm zeroed and on one thing. So, of course, I don't have a perfect understanding of the chaos to come. Hmm. 
Come think of it, this whole idea comes mainly from her. A part of it also comes from my bo uh, from my boy. At any rate, I have no intention of making a public appearance. So you're saying you want to remain behind the scenes even after all the ceremonies uh, you performed. My, you're too modest. Say what you will. I've always been the one to support matters from behind the scenes. And I am proud to play that role. Well, well, talk about being stalkal and bland. I remember my wife once telling me that I'm an old-fashioned pragmatist. Eh, you don't have to bring her into the picture. But anyway, aren't you kind of dev devious uh, this way? It's depressing if you ask me. You should show more enthusiasm. Hush, enthusiasm is best left to women. Is that so? Well, speaking of women, it seems you f you're you fond of the goddess besides your wife, right? What a tactless thing to say. Don't you dare lump my wife w in with a voodoo intent. In 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 oh man, I can't speak right now. And I don't like the way you just said that. It's... Is it just me, or do you actually look to be having fun? Well, it's been a long journey after all. I haven't had a lots of fun in a while. What a carefree guy. Are you jealous? Pity, <laughs> pity yes, rather. Oh, whatever. That's just an, your excuse for being so gloomy. Anyway, I should go back now. My kinds are already making great progress with our plans. I sincerely hope those sprouts won't be plucked from the soil. Ah, rest assured, it's my pleasure to make certain flowers bloom. A flower with a stalk uh, that's red as like blood, and a flower that's darker than black, and a flower from which nectar filled with the flavor of the bitter sweet tears drips. Oh, and what is that flower you speak of? It's obvious. The flower stems from the lament of Gaia. Save point, please. I don't want... Oh, thank you. I'm just gonna end it here. My... My fucking... Ah, my mouth is all fucking dried up. I can't speak anymore. Uh, Not having water was a mistake. I was 17. Not even the title. Anyhow, that's it for today.